You guys have said that Redbreast 12 cast strength blows the original 80 proofer out of the water. Let's see if you were right. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Bourbon Hutch, and thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the world of whiskey. So, a couple months ago, I went out and got Redbreast 12, just the original 80 proofer, at your recommendation. It was one of the most highly recommended bottles on the channel. You guys said in terms of exploring and expanding my palate and getting to know international whiskey, especially Irish whiskey, Redbreast 12 was the way to go. But you've also been following that up with a bunch of comments about how the cast strength version is just so much better. And for me, I think when I reviewed Redbreast 12, the number one thing I noted was I love the flavors, just wish it was a little bit more proofy and had a little bit more staying power. And so you all pointed me to the Red Breast 12 cast strength. I have seen that out in the wild a couple of times for a hundred bucks, if not more than that, sometimes as high as like 130. But luckily a fan of the channel, James Street, was kind enough to send in a whole set of samples. And one of those was Red Breast 12 cast strength. So it says on here that it's 112.6 proof. And I'm not sure if that's the same across every Red Breast 12 cast strength, but it's certainly quite a bit more than the original 80 proofer. So thanks to James, we are able to taste the Red Breast 12 cast strength before having to go out and make a purchase. And also we get to compare to the original. So the story here with Red Breast 12 goes that it is basically a quintessential Irish whiskey. It's from Irish distillers over in Ireland. I think they also own like Jameson and Powers, some other major brands. It's a single pot still Irish whiskey. I believe the mash bill here is a mix of malted and unmalted barley. Obviously it's aged 12 years given that age statement. It says that it's aged with toasted oak and sherry undertones. I believe it's put into X bourbon and X sherry casts at some point in its journey to become what is known as Red Breast 12. The only difference I am aware of between the original 80 proofer and the cast strength is the proof. I think everything else from what I can tell is the same. Let me know if I'm wrong on that, but as far as I know, this is a level playing field except for much higher octane. In terms of pricing, I did mention how the cast strength usually sits around that $90 to $100. Can be more than that though. And the regular old red breast can vary somewhere between 60 to 75 bucks in most areas. All right, without further ado, let's dive in. So I know this is basically a review of Red Breast 12 cast strength, but I'm gonna start out with the 80 proofer here just because I don't wanna blow out my palate and then come to it and be disappointed because the 80 proof probably just won't stand up necessarily to the higher proof option. So we'll start here, then we'll cleanse our palate and we'll go into the cast strength. All right, so on the nose, it's really nice. I remember loving the nose and I do really like it. I mean lighter fruitier strawberry notes lots of honey good amount of that like malted barley note just comes through for me a little bit of apple touch of spice like a cinnamon or clove probably more like a cinnamon overall spice though uh, a little bit of hay Probably matches that barley with that hay kind of quality. Lots of vanilla, but nice and sweet and fruity and has a pretty strong presence for something that's 80 proof. So jumps out of the glass pretty well. Let's go in for a sip on the palate here. Cheers, everybody. Dang, that just gets better and better. I mean, I'm starting to enjoy it so much more than when I originally opened it, and I did like it when I first had it. There is shortbread cookie all over that, vanilla frosting on top of that with some honey drizzle, and I'm not kidding, that's what it tastes like. It's just so nice. There's that little bit of strawberry, but more in that cookie note. And then I think the sherry casts add a little layer of like a, an almond or a hazelnut that kind of gives it a rounded flavor to it. So really nice overall, very easy to sip. I do think that uh, the, the sweet spot here is the front palate and the mid palate. Back end of the palate and the finish just aren't super flavorful and don't last super long. Mouth feels pretty good, but overall it just, it fades pretty quickly for me, but the flavors it gives are really nice, which is why I've been so interested in the cast strength and really eager to dive in. 
Let me get some water. All right, let's dive into the cast strength. So this is my first impressions. I've just cracked open the uh, sample here. Haven't even tasted it or smelled it. So here we go. Oh yeah. Instantly a darker, deeper nose. It's more brown sugar, maple syrup, vanilla, like gobs of vanilla. Still that honey note too there, but maybe even a darker honey than a light hay and barley kind of honey on the, the regular 80 proofer. This is more like a maple syrup and honey and brown sugar and vanilla. There is a cherry note now. I think instead of strawberry, there's more of a, a just a nice bright cherry. A little bit of that spice as well here, but really not proofy at all. No like ethanol kick for me. Buttered toast too, really coming through like buttered bread, buttered pancakes kind of quality. I think Irish whiskey in general, I get that sort of shortbread or, or just bready kind of quality and that's coming through here. So overall, I'd say they, they do have a similar DNA, but this one is noticeably darker and deeper and richer and less light and bright and punchy. And that's kind of what you'd expect for something a little bit more proofy. Let's dive into the palette. Really excited here, everybody. Cheers. Mm. Wow. It's very different. Although I will say as it faded off, I got many of the notes here, but initial thoughts are way more spice. I mean, like good amount of cinnamon. There's even like a black pepper and there's definitely a clove kind of nature to it. So good spice burst right as the sort of first thing I noticed on the front palate. Mid palate started to go a little bit more in that like brown sugar. I think a little bit of that like hazelnut is still there or almond. So a little bit nutty. And back end for me is like really fading to this, that shortbread cookie with the vanilla frosting on top. So there's still good vanilla and shortbread here, like I got on the original. But what's on top, instead of like a honey drizzle, it's like a deep, dark plum or dark cherry jam that is now drizzled on top. It really goes to a darker fruit, something pitted and um, very kind of dried, dark fruit. like just a noticeable shift to something different. I'm gonna stick with this now and go in for a second sip, see if we can pick out some more complexity. And then we'll probably go back to the 80 proofer just for one more comparison. All right, cheers everybody. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the word that's coming to mind is a little bit more like prickly or effervescent. So. That one, my palate was a little bit more acclimated, so the front palate was a little bit sweeter. Just more of a brown sugar note for me and vanilla, which is nice. Spice came back up in the mid palate. And again, it was that like cinnamon prick, a little bit prickly um, with its spice, so a little bit black pepper, a little bit of allspice maybe too. So that comes through, maybe a little bit touch of that nuttiness. And then the finish kind of transitions from that nuttiness again to that vanilla frosting, some jam, and a little bit of like, I think maple syrup even sort of sticking around. I think more of that nut now, actually, as I keep talking, a little bit more of that nut is still there. They're almost flip experiences for me where this one, the original 80 proofer starts off so sweet and inviting. The then kind of fades and, and I wish it lasted longer. The cast strength starts off a little bit aggressive and prickly, but then the finish is just phenomenal and it's probably my favorite part of it. So. Let me get a little bit more water. We'll do one more sip. And then let's go in here now on the Red Breast Original just to go back and compare. Yep, so much lighter and brighter on the nose. Cheers. Yep. Yeah, it's sort of like if you just took the base and depth of the cast strength out of the equation, I'd imagine you get something like this, which is a little bit lighter, more strawberry in instead of cherry, more hay and honey and barley instead of that brown sugar and jam, and 
Still some of that shortbread and nut quality just coming through as, as a backbone here, but coming off of the cast strength, it's even more stark how light and bright this can come across. Cast strength adds all of those bass tones and depth that you're looking for from a really phenomenal whiskey. Going to this Redbreast 12 as my first sip of whiskey today, which it actually was, really hit my palate wonderfully with that easy sweetness. Going to the cast strength, just step things up a notch. Going back to the Red Breast 12 shows how light and quick this experience can be. I will say, cast strength, I'm loving so much of it. I do think there's a little bit of a prickly aggressiveness there, and the spice is, is very prominent. It's a little bit kind of, of a roller coaster ride, which is great. I mean, I love being intrigued and entertained by a whiskey, but um, it's very different. It's not an easy sipper, it's more of an aggressive sipper that fades into a really wonderful finish. So again, recap here of this whole experience. I think that for this Red Breast 12 cast strength adds more depth and flavor. There's more complexity because of that. The nose is really, really nice and rich and dark and inviting. The palate is a little aggressive at first, but the finish I think is the star of the show at that like shortbread and vanilla and jam and a little bit of nut like really phenomenal finish. The Red Breast 12 original is still solid, very easy sipper. If that's gonna be the only slash first thing you have of the day, it's perfectly wonderful to sit with, not think too much about, and just really enjoy. Cast strength, if you're looking for something a little bit more punchy, aggressive, exploratory, and complex, I definitely think the cast strength is worth a look. And for me, at that $100 price point, it is international whiskey and it's got a 12 year old age statement. So I'd be probably willing to pay that and we'll be now looking to probably get my own bottle of this because I really do think it's really, it's good stuff. And what it's showing me is that, you know, my impression of Irish whiskey so far has been more in this Redbreast 12 original and I've had Jameson and just feels a little bit lacking depth. This Redbreast 12 cast strength, I cannot say that about, so really excited. And I'm excited to keep uh, exploring this and hopefully continue to progress in exploring more international whiskeys and expanding my palate because I know my channel's called The Bourbon Hutch and that's what I focus on the most, but always wanting to learn more and especially appreciative when you guys let me know in the comments what I should go out and get next. So let me know if you've had both of these expressions, have you had the cast strength compared to the Red Breast 12 original 80 proofer. What did you think about comparison points? And then of course, let me know in the comments below, what is the next Irish whiskey or international whiskey that you think I should go out and grab? Until I see you guys again for another video, all I can say is keep drinking good whiskey and cheers.